Hi everyone, welcome back to Lead Coding. I am your host Faraz. So I have decided to make detailed solutions to the Lead Code weekly and bi-weekly problems. So here it is the contest number 245 and we are going to solve problem number 2 and problem number 3. So first of all, let us start with the problem number 3. It was simpler than problem number 2 I guess. Uh, many have solved this. So now before moving forward, if you want to get hired in the top tech companies like Facebook, Google, Microsoft, Amazon, then you need to check out interviewing.io. You will practice realistic coding interviews with senior engineers working at these places. They will give you detailed feedback on exactly what you have to work upon. Interviewing.io has the largest network of experienced tech interviewers in the world, so you can book an interview with as little as 24 hours notice. And the best part is, you don't have to pay until you get hired. So I have provided the link in the description, you should definitely go and check it out. We are given a triplet, the target triplet. And this we have to generate from the given set of triplets. Okay, you must have read the problem statement carefully. So, what I came up during the contest is, let us say, let us say we have a certain triplets, and first, the first observation is, the first observation is, if if we have two triplets, x1, x2, x3, and y1, y2, y3. And we merge them. We know after merging, it will be maximum of x1, y1, maximum of x2, y2, maximum of x3, y3. Okay. And let's say this is the resultant. This is the resultant that is z1, z2, z3. Okay. Now this is this was the first triplet. This was the second triplet. This is the resultant triplet. Now let us say we have the third triplet, and that is a1, a2, a3. Now if I want to merge this with this it will be maximum of z1 a1, z2 a2, z3 a3. But the same operation, the same operation is equivalent to performing the merge operation between these three. Taking the maximum of x1, x2, taking the maximum of x1, y1, a1, x2, y2, a2, x3, y3, a3. Okay. So instead of merging two, then merging, uh, then merging the result with another one, we can simply merge these three all together. All right, so I hope you understand what I mean to say. This is the first observation. Now, the second observation is, let us say we have a target and the target is A1, A2, A3. Okay, we want to generate this. And we have a set of triplets. Now let us say we have a triplet X1, X2, X3. And if the value of X1 is greater than A1, okay, so can we take this triplet into account? Is it usable for us? Can we take it into our account? No, we cannot. Because once this x1 exceeds this a1, we can never get a1 again. Okay? Because we always have to take the maximum operation. That is why if x1 is greater than a1, then we have to discard this triplet. This is of no use for us. Similarly, if x2 is greater than a2, this is of no use of uh, this is of no use for us. And if x3 is greater than a3, then also it's of no use. So we ha we have we are going to discard it in any of these three cases. Okay. So this is the second observation. Now talking about a third observation. So yeah. So the third observation is let us say we have y1, y2, and y3. This as a triplet. Okay. Now the value of y1 is smaller than a1. The value of y2 is smaller than a2. The value of y3 is smaller than a3. So if we take this triplet into account, is it anyhow going to affect the result? Will it disturb the result? Okay. The answer is no. It is not going to disturb the result because uh, there might be some another triplet that will absorb this. After merging, it will get absorbed. But yes, it is not going to disturb us. So we can take this into account. Okay. Although it's of no use, it's of no benefit, but still taking this, uh, taking this into account is not going to harm us. So we can divide all the triplets which are given to us in two classes. Okay. This is the class number one. This is the class number two. Whatever triplets are given to us, we can divide it into these two classes. And this is the target triplet A1, A2 and A3. Now, let us say there is a triplet that that we are going to check and in that triplet we will check if the value of the triplet uh, let me denote it by x x1 x2 
x3. If any of these values, x1 or x2 or x3, is greater than their corresponding a1, a2 or a3, then we are going to put it into this class, the class number 1, discarded. Okay? Then second class, we can take this as taken. Okay? Taken and rejected. Rejected is a better word here. Rejected. Okay? So if any of these values, uh, if x1 is greater than a1 or x2 is greater than a2 or x3 is greater than a3, then we are going to reject that. Okay? Because it will take us far away from the result and we will never be able to come back to the result. We will never be able to achieve our target. Then the second class is the rest of the triplets which are remaining comes into the second class. Okay? So whatever is not rejected comes to the class taken. Alright. Now, as uh, we discussed the first condition, that we can merge them all together. So whatever uh, triplets we, are, we have taken, we are going to merge them all together using a for loop. Okay? And then finally check that if the resultant of this taken is equal to the target. If it is, then we are going to return true, otherwise we are going to return false. Let me just show you the code. Uh, it will become a bit more clear. So this is the result this, which I want to generate. Now if if the triplet i0 is greater than or equal to, uh, if it is smaller than or equal to, it means taken. Okay, this is the condition for taken. Right, the target is either greater or equal to the corresponding uh, index in the triplet. Okay, this is the condition for taken, and we are going to merge them all together. Okay, result of zero is maximum of result of zero, and targets i zero results 1 is equal to maximum of result 1, target i1 and so on. These all are taken. Now finally I will compare whatever uh, I have taken and after merging I got result. I will compare the result with the target and then return it. I hope this is understandable, it is clear. So these are three conditions that came up to, that came in my mind during the contest and I came up with the solution. So now let us talk about the problem number 2 and I think this problem was mm, a bit tricky and yes many people were not able to solve this so uh, yeah let me just show you what I came up during the solution I mean during the contest so so what we can do is we can check one by one okay the first thing is we should know to compare uh, whether one string is a substring of another one and how to do that comparison so it is ABC ACB a B C A C B. This is the first thing we should know how to check if one string is a substring of another one. Okay, subsequence. Okay. So uh, to check if one string is a subsequence of another sub uh, another string, what we need to do is we need to assign two pointers. Okay, and then keep incrementing them like if, if we are going to compare these two if these two are equal then we will be incrementing both of these I will come here J will come here similarly if these two are equal then we will increment I will come here and J will come here now J exceeds the range of this string so we will exit and we will say that yes a B is a subsequence of a B C a C B okay let me take uh, something bit more complex here let us say I want to find the substring a c a okay a c a i want to check this if this is a subsequence of uh, the given string so this is my i this is my j now these two are same so we will increment i will come here j will come here these two are not same so what should i increment i should be incrementing i not j because this we have to completely cover okay but we can skip some indices in in this string string s in p we have to cover all these indices so now j will stay here and i will go here now comparing these two these two are same so i will also increment j will also increment this is how you compare that if two uh, that if one string is a subsequence of another string all right after that after that what we can do is we can go one by one okay we can start with k is equal to zero when k is equal to zero I can remove the third index okay 
so which index will be removed 0 1 2 3 a will be removed and we will be able to get a b as a substring a b as a subsequence okay after that I will take k is equal to 1 so I can remove 1 and 3 I will remove 1 and 3 so b will be removed and a will be removed but we still got a b as a subsequence okay so let me just take this example this one so this is the given string s then it is a b c d a b c d and we can remove 3 2 1 4 5 6 3 2 1 4 5 6 okay so first of all I will try to remove this 3 so 0 1 2 3 this is removed can we get a b c d a b c d yes we are getting a b c d okay so k is equal to 0 we are getting the um, we are getting p as a subsequence of s now check for k is equal to 1 in k is equal to 1 we can remove these two so 3 and 2 will be removed 3 is removed and 2 is removed now can we get a b c d we are not getting a b c d so k is equal to 1 is the answer and anything after this I mean we should stop at k is equal to 1 so yeah k is equal to 1 is the answer wait a second um, if we remove the first index CD is no longer after removing the index 3 this becomes this ok ABCD is subsequence of this maximum k you can choose P is still a subsequence so uh, we should choose such a k that P is still a subsequence so after removing 2 and 3 so this is 2 and this is 3 after removing the character at the index 3 this becomes this is still a subsequence so we are able to remove this okay all right all right I got it so we have to actually tell that how many k's can we how, how starting from this position it is actually one index okay instead of zero indexing it is one indexing so k is equal to zero is acceptable that means one element is acceptable we can remove one element from here so we are returning one as the answer all right so instead of this I should have written k is equal to one and k is equal to two so k is equal to 2 is failing, k is equal to 1 is accepted, that is why we can return k is equal to 1 as the answer. I hope you understand this. So, so we are going uh, one by one. K, we are checking for k is equal to 1, then we will be checking for k is equal to 2, then k is equal to 3, then k is equal to 4. And as soon as at a particular k, we find that p is not a subsequence of s, then we are going to stop here. And we will return whatever is previous to this. Okay. Alright, so let us say if we stop at k is equal to 5, we will be returning 4 as the answer. Now we are going one by one, okay? This is a kind of a linear search. We are linearly searching the solution. First of all, we tried with 1, then 2, then 3. We are linearly searching the solution starting from 1. But we can do the same thing using a binary search as well. Alright? So this is how the intuition of binary search comes in like for once you are doing a linear search and then you will see that if we make a binary search okay instead of selecting uh, one by one if we some some select somewhere in the between and we removed all these elements okay and then we check that if p is a subsequence of s after removing these elements from s if we are getting the answer as yes that p is still a subsequence then we can say okay um, we can try removing some more then our s will become mid plus 1 otherwise our uh, end will become mid minus 1 alright so let me just show you the code this is my start this is my end okay this is my mid and this is the condition which I am checking if it is still a subsequence then of course mid is my answer this is not my uh, exact answer but this could be my answer then start is equal to mid plus 1 otherwise end is equal to mid minus 1 alright and then checking the condition as I told you so first of all I'm putting something I can put anything here maybe a question mark or something 
maybe a dash or a question mark here so that will denote that this position we, we cannot use this particular position all right it will denote removed from uh, 0 to k I will remove everything in s okay then we are comparing in a similar way that I should j just demonstrated with the help of an example so this is how you compare alright so this is it for the video I hope you like it I hope you understand it and you can code it out by yourself so thanks a lot guys